MrYorkieLoverFitness.com. Here with Rick Drayson, and uh, it was today's July second, two thousand sixteen, and I woke up yesterday morning and I saw your video that you were in the hospital, and you you talked about you having fluid in your lungs, and it really hit a, hit home with me because I remember you know Leroy Colbert going through the same thing about seven years ago. Yeah. So I contacted you, wanted want to talk with you, and and possibly film a video, so you know we could talk about. You know, first of all, if you can go back a week or so ago when you were yeah, first sure. in the hospital and tell us what happened. What's really sad is that in 10 days I'm having a birthday. So oh. i got to be healthy for my birthday as well. And, and how old are you going to be? <clears throat> I'm going to be, yeah. Huh? I'm going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be, yeah, uh, 72. Awesome. So um, I've always had a healthy life. Uh, no problems really. Maybe a cold once in a while. And this hit me about, i got to go back maybe a month or better. Okay. I didn't know what it was. I just kept feeling like I couldn't breathe and I would cough. I cough so much in the morning I'd almost throw up. And then i go to the gym and work out because nothing really stops me from training. I have a good workout and then i drive away, go to Starbucks, and then I would just want to sit down and crash. I just felt horrible, real tired. And I shoot my shows and I get some rest and I feel okay. And then uh, every day would be like that and then it get a little bit worse and get a little bit worse. And then going back about a month ago, I remember it was getting worse and I felt like there was a weight on my chest. Whenever I'd walk anywhere, I thought I was having a heart attack. <clears throat> then it would go away. I'd be fine for a few days. So the last week, maybe, no, the week before last, I started feeling really bad. I couldn't breathe at all. And so uh, I couldn't even go out and get my mail. And I went to a doctor and he looked at me and he said, uh, you have a little bit of pneumonia in your lungs. So he put me on a Z-Pack. Um, that didn't do much. Um, Maybe a little bit of help, but I wasn't satisfied. So three days later, I went to my cardiologist and I told him what was going on. He said, you feel like you're having a heart attack? I said, yeah. He said, well, you're not. It's your lungs. Your lungs are, are, are inflamed and they can't move. So let's put you on a medrol, which is cortisone, and that will allow your lungs to shrink down or the inflation, the inflammation to go away. So I tried that and I actually felt better, but he gave me one of these bronchial inhalator, and I had a cortisone steroid in it, and I was told that they can cause more problems. And so it did. It made my stomach upset, and someone told me it could give me even worse pneumonia. So he took me off that, and he put me on a, a three-day thing of Medrol, and it didn't do much. So two days later, I went to my ENT, and I had a look at his camera down my throat, and he said I had an infant was an infection on my vocal cords and my sinus. So he gave me antibiotics, a uh, steroid shot of cortisone, and uh, back to It didn't do much. And this was on a Tuesday. On a Wednesday, I had to shoot a, a documentary for a German production company, and I had to be there because it's featuring me in this thing, and it's over in Germany. So I went to Venice and I did it, and I was running around, not running, but walking. The last thing they want to do is walk down in the sand, I said, I can't get that far. And I got about a block or two, and I had to stop and breathe. Another block, I had to stop and breathe. I finally got down there, finished the job. They came and picked me up. <clears throat> I got my car and I drove home. That night, my daughter stayed over, and uh, the next morning I got up, and I was really bad. I couldn't hardly even move out of bed. So she called 911, the paramedics came out, and they said I was full of fluid, which I was. I was weighing 231, which is heavy for me. And so um, we went to... Uh, St. Joe's Hospital, where I am now. We ran some tests, put me in here. The next day, they said, your lungs are full of fluid. We're going to have to drain it from the back. So they did, and they put the tube in. and took out two liters of blood and fluid that surrounded my lungs and my heart. And um, can you imagine walking around with all that in your body? I mean, yeah. that's a lot of fluid. And, and what was the cause of that? I mean, from just getting <clears throat> like a cold and the pneumonia? Or? Yeah, the pneumonia was the start of it. but. What happened was I was on blood thinners because I have AFib and I take ibuprofen for my knee pain or uh, uh, anti-inflammatory, which you're not supposed to do. It can cause internal bleeding. So I could have coughed and hemorrhaged and then the blood would come out. That's, a, that's the possibility because uh, they wanted if I got hit. So they drained it out. I felt better. Um, signs went down a little bit different. And so uh, I went back to my room. The next day I wanted to go home. And they said, okay, um, I don't really want you to go. I said, are you sure? I said, well, I'm signing out. They said, no, then we're not, you know, you're going to go home and die. 
<clears throat> so I sat and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, all right, I'll stay one more night. I stayed one more night and they were happy about it. And they said, this is Heinz look good, just go home and rest, make sure you have oxygen there. So I did, and I went home on a Saturday. This is another Saturday. I lasted Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday at home. I just couldn't move. I had oxygen with a 50-foot cord. I go from one room to another, and by the time I get to the other room, I would just collapse. I couldn't shower by myself. I'd get out of gas while I was shaving. Uh, couldn't get dressed. Sit on a couch all day. Made sure I ate, but food tasted horrible. Any food, I just was good on fruit and yogurt. So we had a follow-up with the doctor Thursday. I came over here, and he looked at me and he says, you're not a well man, you got a heart problem, you got a lung problem, and you got to go back to the hospital, or you go home and die. You got your choice. So here I am. So they took another big liter of fluid out of my lungs. Today I got all my results back. I still have shortness of breath because it takes time to build the lungs up. <clears throat> and a little phlegm in my chest. And my heart is stable. It's doing well. There's no fluid around it. They're worried about the fact I had one kidney because it was elevated, but my kidney is fine. Um, I don't think there's any more fluid in the lungs. But every other vital sign has been perfect. Blood pressure is perfect. Everything's perfect. But I'm weak from laying in a hospital bed for a week. I'm used to working out and moving. So when I get up and walk, I'm really, really weak. It's, if you lay anybody down for a week in a hospital bed, they're not going to move when they get out. So I may get out tomorrow or the next day <clears throat> when they feel I'm ready. If I'm not ready, I'm not going to go home because I can't function by myself. My family was good enough to stay with me 24-7, but it's a burden on them. I don't want to do that. So I'm thinking that uh, next few days I'll get out of here and be home. Maybe the 4th of July, and I'm just going to take it easy, no workouts for a while, uh, eat well, rest, move slow, take one day at a time, see where it goes. And, and what's amazing is you, you're you actually someone that takes care of themselves. I do. So imagine all the people that don't take care of themselves <clears throat> and that this stuff happens to. Like, like probably because you did take care of yourself, you're able to recover faster, and some people may never recover mm -hmm. that don't take care of themselves. So, I mean, that, that goes to, to, you know, the belief of this, you know, health that we, we believe in and keeping your body in shape and well, watching what right. you eat. You know, the doctor said to me, he said, Rick, you got, you're a strong guy, you bench press 400 pounds, and you can't even go do your own, shave your face without falling over. Yeah. He said, that's, it's not, you're not the same guy. So you got to get back to health, and I can get you there, but you got less than me. You got to start with the doctor sometimes. Yeah, and, yeah, and then as, as we talked earlier off camera, it's, it's, <clears> it's, <throat> as we get older, especially men, is we have a fear of the hospital, or we just don't, we think we're stronger, we can just do it ourselves, but there's just sometimes you have to, accept the warning signs and the symptoms of something and, and go get help because yeah. it could be a, literally a matter between life and death. There's no you question know. about it. You know, I have a lot to accomplish. And I've accomplished a lot in my life so far. Excuse the voice, it's just worse. Yeah, no, no, uh, <clears throat> But I can't, uh, I can't give up. I mean, I got a lot to no, do. No. So I'll be back and I'll get back in shape. You know, I'll get, I'll get back on my show. Yeah. And I'll, it'll be right where I was before, better, actually better. Yeah. I, know, I know I got a handle on it. But I do have to watch my salt and certain things out of my diet so I don't retain water. Because yeah. my feet were three times the size. Really? They look like they look like water balloons. And you didn't get any photos of that? I do have some somewhere. <laughs> those those would be I great. I couldn't even walk. I was walking on pillows. My feet felt like I was walking on pillows. So much water in my feet. Wow. And that, so that's where that's where the excess water went? Was it in your well, feet? Well, it goes or to gravity. You... Wherever your gravity hits, if you're oh. standing, it's going to go to your feet. It's from your back. It goes to your back. But it... Uh, if I sleep with my legs up like I did last night, my feet were normal this morning. But there's, I've lost a lot of weight. It's okay. 20 pounds. So, so is this gonna? So the diuretic thing is that gonna be a, like a normal part of your life that you're gonna have to do every so For often a now, of time, or, yeah. or just to get past this phase? Just past this phase, yeah. Okay, and then and so and then the doctors say that this is just a phase, and once you get past this, you're in the clear. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's yeah, good. I don't think it's getting worse. I hope not. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, when I when I saw your video yesterday, it just it really made me think. You know, and I just like I and and I I've known uh, Rick for a couple of years, and I've known him through Leroy, and we're we're not really close or anything, but I I saw him and I could relate to what you're going through, and I was like, I want to go see this man, if if he wants me to come see him, and and we could talk about this. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, it's you know. science, and you guys should know this. <clears throat> if you don't feel good, <clears throat> you have a cold and a cough, and you start to see fluid in your body, you go to the doctor. If you have shortness of breath, tightening of the chest, for example, uh, there wasn't any pain, just tightening. It's like somebody was sitting on my chest couldn't breathe, go to the doctor. If you don't go to a cardiologist, go to pulmonary. Those guys know the same thing. Yeah. And they'll check you out and do a CAT scan x-ray, tell you where you're at and get it done now. 
you got to wait one more day, you can die. Yeah, no, it's just, it's crazy. It's uh, catching it early is worth with anything, with yeah. cancers or anything is, is yeah. catching it early. You have a chance. If you don't, then you then you're you're done. Yeah. So it's it's good that you were wise enough to catch that. You know. Yeah, I'm sure happy I did. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, gonna be back. Yeah. Well, I mean, I really appreciate you letting me come visit you oh, and sure, uh, sure, talk with you, and and uh, we we all out there wish you the best in uh, recovery. If anyone wants to come see you, they can come by here. Or? They can, but it's been swamped, so I wouldn't. Yeah, has has it really been swamped? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you were joking when you told me 25 that. Twenty-five people a day. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah well, uh, there you go, Rick Jason. What do you expect? Huh? Yeah, I know it's weird. All right, well, it's Rick, nice, we have we we hope you get better soon, and uh, we really appreciate, it, brother. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, guys.